G'day and welcome to Glasshouse Country. We had two short talks on our early explorers who were associated with our area. Glasshouse Country can reflect on a number of periods in our history, ranging from the geological origins of our mountains through to the most recent listing on the National Heritage Database. Each of these periods is a story in itself, but today we are to visit the period that helped in developing and naming our district, and indeed our country, that we now enjoy, that of early European exploration. Two of these explorers, come navigator cartographers, were James Cook and Matthew Flinders. Cook and Flinders had in common a number of attributes. Both were commissioned first lieutenants in the Royal Navy. They were commanders of their own ship, of Her Majesty's Bark Endeavour, and the Her Majesty's Sloop Investigator. Both left their mark in naming our place and our country. Cook named the glass houses, and Flinders was the first to use the name Australia. Unfortunately, both died premature death during or as a result of their efforts. Cook, at 50 years, killed at Hawaii during the third voyage in 1779, and Flinders, at 40 years, died at home in 1814. Today's talk is about the second of our explorers, Matthew Flinders. As with James Cook, Matthew Flinders also completed three voyages to our region. The first in 1791 as a midshipman under Captain Bly, which was also to include Tahiti. On this trip, he only visited the southeast coast of Van Diemen's Land, Tasmania. On the eve of the first voyage to Terra Australis, Flinders signed on for service on the HMS Reliance under Captain Waterhouse. Also on board was a young surgeon, George Bass. They arrived at Port Jackson on September 1795. In 1798, after promotion to lieutenant, Flinders together with Bass circumnavigated Van Diemen's Land on the sloop Norfolk. On July the 8th, 1799, Flinders left Sydney for a six-week expedition to explore the Glass House and Harvey Bays. Included in the crew was an Aboriginal named Bongaree, who was held in high esteem by Flinders and remained a constant companion of Flinders, including during his circumnavigation of Australia. From July 15 to 20, 1799, he mapped the six most northern islands of Moreton Bay, followed by the need to repair a leaking plank on his sloop, the Norfolk, when in Pumastone Passage. On July 26, 1799, Flinders, Bongaree and two seamen set off to explore the glass houses, but were diverted by marshy areas and Glass Mountain Creek, and decided instead to climb Mount Birabarum to carry out a survey of the area. The party then set off to climb Mount Tibragargan, but being late in the day, decided to set up camp next to Tibragargan Creek. The next day, it was agreed that climbing Tibragargan would be too difficult, so the party returned to the Norfolk. Flinders returned to England, and after promotion to commander, he left England on July the 19th, 1801, as captain of HMS Investigator, a 334-ton sloop, with orders to explore and map the southern coast of Terra Australis. This journey was to be the beginning of his circumnavigation of Australia, the first known person to do so. Following a number of mishaps, including a near disaster shipwreck on the Barry Reef and a six and a half year incarceration on Mauritius by the French. Flinders arrived back in England on October the 23rd, 1810 in poor health. After completing his journey, a voyage to Terra Australis, he lived just long enough to see the manuscript through the press. He died on July 19, 1814. He was just 40 years of age. He gave us our name. Flinders was the first man to systematically use the name Australia and after publication of his journal, the name was gradually adopted. He was a fine seaman who successfully brought ships home that were utterly unseaworthy and he was one of the great cartographers and navigators of the world. He was also our first tourist.